I want to read out another quote, Adam. The author of obviously Crashed, which is coming out, it'll be on your shelves next week. All of the translations are going to be out within the next six weeks. But here is a quote. In the 10 years since the financial crisis of 2008, the idea that the economy is a realm beyond politics or the play of international power has been exposed as a self-serving illusion. Donald Trump is the most spectacular manifestation of that disillusionment and the one that matters most. He is an outright nationalist pushing against the trend of globalization. He has little respect for markets unless they deliver the outcomes he likes. How would President Trump have dealt with the crisis of 2008? Uh, this is the question that uh, Hank Paulson asked uh, in 2016 when he was asked to endorse Trump as a candidate and decided not to. I think it's a little unfair to Trump. Obviously, there's a sort of simple answer, which is an uncooperative uh, nationalist. Trump, in fact, in 2008, was an outspoken advocate of Obama's stimulus policy, went on uh, Republican news shows to defend uh, the incoming administration and the vigor of its stimulus. Trump's an interventionist, I think. The question really is whether his interventionism uh, would permit him also to think hard about the international dimensions of the crisis, which were key in 2008. Uh, if there's one thing I think that we've learned about the crisis in the years since is the significance of its global dimension and particularly the interrelationship between the US and the European banking sector in those crucial months in the fall of 2008. And what really made the difference compared to, say, the Great Depression of the early 30s was the ability of the Fed at that moment to end as a, a lender of last resort to the entire dollar-based global banking system. That, I think, is really the trillion-dollar question about any future management of global financial crises as well. Does the Fed, do the U.S. authorities, the national authorities of the U.S., have the license to do what's necessary to stabilize the global economy? They did in 2008. Will they in future? That's really an open question. Adam, I'm also looking at central bank policy and not just the Fed, but across the world at the moment. How now, when we're looking for normalization, that has such international ramifications. I'm looking at GMM, which shows us how the bond yields are all spiking today on the back of expectations that the BOJ might start to fine tune their guidance tomorrow. We might start to see any hint of normalization from Japan as well. This has huge global effects. How do we start to... Is this just the new normal? Well, it's very difficult to know what normal means anymore, isn't it? Since 2008, um, the entire global money machine has been subject to massive intervention by the central banks. And even when they're not intervening, we're asking why they're not intervening. So normalization will never mean quite the same thing again. It's a little bit like paradise. Once you've eaten that apple, you never really get back to innocence. Uh, and I think that's the world we're in. And the BOJ is not just a significant in quantitative terms. It's also symbolically significant because it's the last bank standing in the queue QE game. Fundamentally, the ECB has announced the glide path out of QE. The BOJ has still got its foot firmly to the pedal. And that is uh, the basic question, I think, uh, that the markets are posing right now. Uh, will the Japanese ease up? The question, of course, is uh, can they ease up, given their commitment to a 2% inflation target, which they're well away, from, well away from achieving? So that, I think, is the, the dilemma. Can they keep going, uh, faced with the side effects, the damaging consequences, the distortions created by the enormous enormous monetary expansion that they've engaged in. Adam, given that you've been contemplating massive macro questions over the last several months and several years, let me ask you this. Is the liberal order failing? And if so, what's next? Or is this just a pause? I think the Liberal Order is undoubtedly going through a spectacular crisis. Uh, the Liberal Order is a, is a system that needs driving, uh, and it was driven badly uh, in crucial moments. And that is profoundly delegitimizing. Competence matters. Uh, and the, the system's managers at crucial moments were revealed uh, their incompetence. That was profoundly delegitimizing. And the measures that were taken to stabilize the system, spectacular as they were, lacked the political legitimacy to make them permanent. And I think that's really uh, the question. We really are now at a time of testing as to whether or not uh, the liberal order can be restabilized uh, by intelligent policy. Um, and that, I think, is really the fundamental question facing Europe, the United States, Japan, and their partners in East Asia.